hero, he abides. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way. One, six, zero.
for city to which I never been before no sad goodbye will there be spoken for time won't matter anymore Beulah
Singing has been dynamic this morning. Amen. Choir, I've got good news for the choir and also for the rest of you. One of these days you won't need that song. You wouldn't need any food on your table. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to wonder where the money is coming from to buy your groceries. Everything is going to be over. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's our God, the one in whom we trust. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. That is 1 Thessalonians. And the fourth chapter. This is the book of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second coming of Jesus Christ, that is preaching on it, is one of my favorite topics. And I'm glad that I can share with you this morning why I preach the second coming of Jesus Christ. In many churches in our land today, and also I suppose in other places, very little is said about the coming again of Jesus Christ. A lot of people are concerned about the present and seemingly not so much the future. And yet in a sense, the coming again of Jesus Christ uh, is not considered to be, in my opinion, a very long uh, look into the future anymore like it used to be a decade or maybe a century ago. Jesus Christ uh, is coming soon, and when uh, the Word of God says soon, it means that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. There are those who feel that since he hasn't come all these years, uh, we need not look for him or we need not even talk very much about his coming again. But whether we uh, believe it or not, the fact is Jesus Christ uh, is coming again. And I love to preach about it. I love to talk about it because it uh, does enhance my Christian life and experience. And I trust and pray that it will do the same for you. In the fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse uh, 16, we'll skip all the way down to the 16th verse. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Here the apostle alludes to the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the fourth time he speaks about it in uh, First Thessalonians. As a matter of fact, it's mentioned in every chapter in the epistle, right straight on to the fifth chapter, and he stresses the fact of the coming again of Jesus Christ. What really caused it is that the Christians and the believers, the family of God in Thessalonica, were considered, uh, and as well as concerned, I should say, about their loved ones who had died in the Lord. They wondered that if Jesus Christ had come, what would happen to those of their family who had died in the Lord? Would they ever see them again? Or would they be among the number of those who would go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes? Well, the Apostle Paul speaks uh, of this and writes and tells them that there's nothing to be dismayed uh, or distraught about because when Jesus Christ comes, uh, the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Jesus Christ is going to give them first attention, and after that he's going to attend to us, the entire family, those who were raised from the dead and those who were alive at his coming, and all of us will be caught away to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. I think we need to preach this more and more because I know of no other Bible doctrine, no other Bible message that would uh, straighten a Christian, that would enthuse a Christian, uh, that would make a Christian aware of the fact that lifetime is waking time, 
whatever you anticipate doing for the Lord Jesus Christ, it's important that you do it now. The apostle encourages us to do that in the fifth chapter of this epistle. Now, when we speak of the second coming of Jesus Christ, we are speaking of his coming again after his death upon the cross. He came the first time, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He came at that time to die for us and to make it possible for God to receive us as his own because we are washed in the precious blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary. And one of these days is coming back again. He's coming back, coming back for his church. Those who have believed in him during the age or the dispensation of God's grace, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the assembled ones, Jesus Christ is coming again. But then also there is another aspect to the coming of Jesus Christ, and it is known as the revelation, and that actually is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because you see, when he comes at the rapture, and may I say that the second coming is in two stages, there's the rapture, and then there is the revelation. The rapture has to do for the church. The church will be raptured or caught up. The word rapture isn't mentioned in the Bible, but the words caught up or the phrase caught up is mentioned there. And that's exactly what the word rapture means, to catch away. And when Jesus Christ comes uh, for the church, he's going to catch her away suddenly, silently, and mysteriously. A person will be sitting next to you, and if you're not a Christian, they will be taken up to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be left uh, behind him. Two will be in the bed sleeping, we're told. One shall be taken, and then the other would be left behind. Two again would be at the mill grinding. One would be taken, and the other left behind. Two would be in the field. One would be taken, another left behind. Another left behind. That's what's going to have when God, or I should say Jesus, comes during the rapture. The church of Jesus Christ will be transported to heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, and of course, there are quite a few things that he has in store for those of us who will be in that number. It's going to be a grand time. That's why I like to talk about it. I'm anticipating that now because with my age, I don't have very much to look forward to. So I've got to look forward, to whether I like it or not, to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again. But those of you who are young, don't you go and take comfort in the fact that you have a lot of time left and you have a lot of age to be covered. The fact is, Jesus Christ may come at any moment. At any moment, he may come and take his people home. So he's coming in uh, to uh, take the church. He's coming for the church. When he comes a second time, he's coming with the church for Israel. And so that is the good news for the Middle East. And Jesus Christ is the only one who's going to solve the problems and the situations of our world. That's why we should revel in the fact that this man from out of space is coming back again. All, all telescopes are, are turned into the skies these days. NASA is probing into the deep uh, atmosphere, and we're discovering so many uh, planets and and also we're reading of uh, uh, visits from huge uh, uh, rocks from outer space that may land on this earth and devastate it. Well, my friends, I want you to know that uh, some superman is coming one of these days from outer space. He's coming first of all for his bride. And then after that, he is coming for Israel. And Jesus Christ is coming again. There is no uh, guessing at all about that. And so one of the reasons why I love to preach the second coming of Jesus Christ is because I believe in the as he said aspect or report of the scriptures. Our, our belief in the coming again of Jesus Christ is based upon what he said. And what he said is worth listening to. And also you can bank on that. He means what he says and he says what he means. And if he says he's coming, he's coming. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. If I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself. As he said, the angel said to those at the tomb who were looking for Jesus Christ, he is risen, as he said. He can't go back on his word. 
He has given the disciples and also the church his word. If I go away, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And so that's the word of the Lord. And that, my friend, must be and will be fulfilled. Also, it is a purifying effect. It has a purifying effect on my life as a Christian. The second coming of Jesus Christ. He who has this hope in him purifies himself, says John, even as he is pure. And whenever you keep in focus the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ, that will have a purifying effect on you. You will want to live in such a way as to glorify God, as to exalt the glorious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as to be a true witness of Him, and as also to be a true representative of Him. And so, my friends, if, if you believe it in the coming again of Jesus Christ, it will really purify your life as a Christian because you want to be ready when Jesus Christ comes. Also, he gives me a bright and a glaring hope for the future, the coming again of Jesus Christ. I'm not looking for death, even though death would come or may come. I'm not looking for that. I am looking again for the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the blessed hope of the church of Jesus Christ. And we of this church age are living in one of the most exciting times of history. And one of the most exciting times of the church age. We see so much of the word of God being fulfilled today that we have every reason to believe that we're living in, the end, living in the end time of this age. Also, I preach the coming again of Jesus Christ because the solution of today's problems are solved in the unveiling of Christ. And that's a fact. The, the, the coming again of Jesus Christ, my friend, will bring about a solution to the problems of this world. United Nations... It's trying all it can to solve the many uh, problems that are facing in our world today. In the Middle East, around the world, hunger, starvation, famine, uh, and uh, disasters, tsunamis, uh, and all the rest of them, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, genocide, and a lot of killing, uh, and a lot of wars, and so on like that. The United Nations has a lot on its hands. Unfortunately, it hasn't been able to solve very many of today's problems. But I am looking beyond the United Nations. I'm looking beyond a new and another president of the United States. I'm looking beyond the European Union. I'm looking beyond, my friend, the Arab-Israeli conflict and situation. I am looking forward to the coming again of Jesus Christ. Whatever the muddy situation is this life, only Jesus Christ can solve it. Only Jesus Christ can clear the water. Only Jesus Christ can bring comfort, solace, and assurance to this whole world of ours. Therefore, I am looking for the coming again of Jesus Christ. It's all I've got. I may have a lot of money, I may have a good house, I may have a good uh, a position and so on like that. All of those things pale into insignificance at the coming again of Jesus Christ because what I have now will be revealed to me in glory because I'm just as much there now as I am here and what I have is just as much there as what I have here in this world, in this life. Also, because... There is life eternal beyond the grave. That's why I believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. My friends, don't you think that after you're dead, you're done. You made a big mistake. You just began to cook. You ain't done. You're not finished. Don't you think that death has gone to the end at all? Don't you dare go and take your life. Don't you dare go and commit suicide because you can't handle the problems that face you day in and day out. Don't you try to end your life, my friend. That will not solve your problem. The only person who can solve your problem and bring any kind of sanity in your life is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. These are, these are human uh, uh, bombers and uh, uh, who go and blow up these uh, 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 cars and, uh, and kill hundreds of people and so on like that. Uh, 
They think they're, they, they, they really think they're, they're going someplace. They ain't going nowhere. I often wonder what happens when in the next life they've killed so many people and they have to face them right in that very moment. They're not going to heaven, aren't going to heaven. They don't belong to God. And no matter what people tell you, no one can exchange uh, the truth of God uh, for lies and deception that is going on in this world today. Don't let anyone deceive you. Stick and stand for the truth, the truth of God's word. And so there is life beyond the grave. And it's eternal life. Also, because I preach it, because I believe him in fanfare ceremonies, protocol, and great celebrations. Did you hear that? I believe in a lot of fanfare. I believe in a lot of ceremony. And believers, or rather Bohemians do. They like their junk news. They like their bands. They like their music. They like to march. Well, my friend, one of the greatest demonstrations, one of the greatest ceremonies is going to take place when Jesus Christ comes. It's going to be a tremendous time. The Bible says we can expect to hear the shout. We can expect the voice of the archangel. We can expect the trump of God. The shout is for those who are dead and in the grave. Everyone who is saved by God's grace will rise out of the grave when the, when the shout is sounded him. And also the voice of the archangel will be heard. That's Michael the archangel. He's going to clear the airwaves. All the principalities and powers. Satan, his demons, his angels will have been pushed on the side. Michael says, get out of the way. The church is marching on. When the saints go marching in. We sing that song when the saints go marching in. But I want to start first of all when the saints go marching out. Because in order for the saints to march in, they got to march out first. Man, that's going to be a time when the people of God are going in. Celestial beings, angels, seraphim, cherubim, watching the blood-redeemed people marching from earth all the way to heaven, singing the song of redemption, washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I tell you, man, that's something to shout about. That's something to thank God for. Also, because this world is not my, not my home, I'm looking for the coming again of Jesus Christ. I don't want to be a displaced or out of place person when I die or when eternity rolls in. I want to enjoy my life in heaven. I want to enjoy all the blessings that God has given to me through Jesus Christ. I am not a displaced person. Christians are not displaced people. Christians are not refugees. We are pilgrims just passing through this old world on the way to our eternal home. We haven't reached home yet. And my friends, I am looking forward to that because sometimes I get tired. Sometimes I get weary. Sometimes I get discouraged. Sometimes I wonder how the wicked could prosper. And there am I going through so many problems and situations. Sometimes I have trouble making ends to meet. Sometimes I have trouble thinking who I am and where to whom I belong. Oh, I thank God. I bless God. I praise God. I am not a displaced person. I belong to Jesus. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus bought me with his precious blood on the cross of Calvary. I am redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Also, I preach the coming again of Jesus Christ because I don't want to go through the great tribulation. I'm a scary person. You can frighten me very easily. You go and tell some ugly ghost stories and then my nerves will begin to twiddle. I want to tell you today, my friend, there's a great period of tribulation coming to this old world. And I am glad the Bible says that the church of Jesus Christ will not go through that. We see it in the book of the Revelation that during the time of great tribulation, John is in glory looking down, beholding all the things that are happening here upon the earth. I'm going to be up there looking down. I will not go through it. I will not participate in it because I will be safe in the arms of Jesus. Safe on his gentle breast. 
thereby as love was shadowed, sweetly my soul will rest in. Also, also I preach the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because suffering saints have hard times, move me to want to sell, to see all of us in a new world environment. We're tired of the way this world is going. There's so much injustice, so much unfairness, so many other nations meddling in the affairs of smaller nations and taking advantage of them and threatening them with a lack of trade or discontinuation of trade with them unless they do what they say. Big boys taking, taking advantage of small boys who can't retaliate. I want to tell those who are doing that today that my Jesus is coming and is coming with a big stick and is going to put you all in your place. There's too much injustice in this world. Poor people, difficult people in this world today. We have to turn to Jesus Christ and lean upon him. Also, I like the coming again of Jesus Christ because it tells me that it's time for work to stop. It's time to punch your clock and leave the place of work and go home. When Jesus comes, that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to be aware of it, but he's going to punch my clock and say, all work is over. Let's go home. Let's go home. But what's home there? The Bible says he has rest with the people of God. There the wicked cease from troubling him and the weary are at rest. Let's go home. What awaits us here? The Bible says there is a marriage supper of the Lamb. A feast like of which you have never been to. I'm looking forward to that. I can't eat very much today. My stomach can't help me very much these days. But brother, sister, I tell you, in that day, Ed Allen is going to have a real stomach full because he's washing the blood of Jesus Christ and he's there at the marriage supper of the Lamb and that's going to be one of the greatest thrills that I've ever had in this life. And listen, I preach the second coming of Jesus Christ because it keeps me from sleeping in this life when I should be serving and waking for God. Now, did you hear that? All of you have been saying amen. All of you lazy people. All of you lazy Christians. If you can only get a hold of the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again, you want to squander life's golden moments. You will become active in the things of God. You will be working for Jesus Christ, not wondering if sister so-and-so is going to do it or brother so-and-so is going to do it. But when you see something need to be done around the church, you're going to do it because you love Jesus. You're going to do it because you have to give an account to Jesus of the things that you've done. My friends, I want you to know that there's a lot to be done. The harvest is plenteous and the laborers are still few. So it's work time, it's serving time. Also, I, I, I preach the second coming of Jesus Christ because it helps me to love God's people more. You don't belong to my, de belong to my denomination. That doesn't matter. If you're a child of God, you're my brother. You're my sister in Jesus Christ. If you're not a member of this church, but if you're saved by the grace of God, you're my brother, you're my sister in Jesus Christ. That's why, that's why I preach the coming again of Jesus Christ. I can't hate others of God's people. I must love them as Jesus loves them, regardless of how I feel about them. Also, it enhances my prayer time and keeps me in conversation with Christ daily because I believe that he's coming soon. I want to get as close as I possibly can to him. There's so many other things I can say relative to the coming again of Jesus Christ. It helps me to forgive my adversaries and to have a spirit of forgiveness. It lightens some of the burdens of life and helps me to hear, to bear them cheerfully. Also, uh, because, because the present is enlightened by the prophecies of the future, I can trust the coming again of Jesus Christ. Now let me pause as I close because every message that is given from the Word of God demands a response. Are you saved? Are you ready for this great event that's going to take place? It may take place today. I challenge you today to do something about your relationship with Jesus Christ and to trust in Him as your Savior. I'm going to ask you all over this audience to bow your heads.
as we go into God's presence, and I want you to search your heart. Let me say this to you, my friend, that the invitation is the most important aspect of the message, and I want you to treat it solemnly, and also trust God and let God be everything that he should be in your life as you start out this year with him. Now, as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, will you put your hand up? Anyone will put their hand up and say, here's my hand. I want you to pray for me. Put it up and I'll, I'll have a word of prayer with you because I want to go when Jesus Christ comes. Put it right up. Yes, sir, I see your hand. Anybody else? Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? We don't have very much time. There's another hand down there and another one down there. Any others? Just put your hand up just before I go to pray. Well, let's all stand and we're going to sing it. Hymn uh, number 309, and those of you put your hand up, just come to the front. Let's have a word of prayer with you and ask God to help you. You do just that. Come right along now. 309, just as I am without one plea. That's right. That's right. Someone over this way and someone that way. Come right along. Come right along. Yes, God bless you. Anybody else? Come right along. Anybody else? There's someone down that way. Anybody else? Jesus is coming and I want Come right along as we see. Just pause for prayer right now our heavenly father we pray dear god that you will bless the word to many hearts to those here in this audience we thank you for those who have responded and come forward and to many others out there who will be listening by means of the radio and the television our god i pray that many will prepare themselves for the coming again of jesus christ because it may be this year may be this week may be this day help them to get ready because in such an hour as you think not, the Bible says, the Son of Man cometh. We ask as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The second verse, and those of you who'd like to come along, still come on. We'll wait for you. on the fifth verse. 